So I'm ready. I've made one prototype, which I posted on Facebook, so some of you saw that already. And I'm ready to make the tutorial for this, for a bag that's very similar to this. In doing this, I sized this to be just the size of what's essentially a sixth of a yard, or one of these pre-cut pieces that, that I can get here locally. These two pieces are 12 by 7. We need two of those. And then we need our flower if we want to decorate that way. And then we need enough of a second color to uh, do our accent color. So my, my zipper is about 19 inches and I'm going to use some buttonhole twist when I sew on my button. And this does, doesn't have the flowers tacked yet, but we will tack the flowers at the end and we'll do everything to make this. And the other thing we're going to feature in this is the basting tape, which I actually like a lot better than I thought. For uh, doing the zipper, it's actually very convenient. In fact, it works so well that at one point I forgot to sew half of my zipper because it was taped on there so well and I was just getting about to the point of closing my bag and it was falling apart and I realized that I hadn't done a bunch of the stitching because it was taped so securely. So anyway, this is a nice product for uh, home sewing. I do like this one with the sparkles in it. What I'm trying to show here is a basic way to cut this out to waste as little as possible. And I'll put a guide on how to do it up on one side of the screen here. But basically my two zipper tabs are here and they're the width of my zipper by one inch each. And then this two by two piece will turn into the center for my flower. And then the rest of my stuff I'm gonna cut out of this. And so I'm gonna show you all that right now. So I have my two zipper tabs. To do this flower, uh, I found that what I wanted to do was first create a circle. Personally, I think that kind of thing, if it's too perfect, it's wrong for this kind of work. So, got that, got that. Then the other things I need are my waves and my curly cues. And to do the waves, I just want those long shapes that go down the bag and all I'm going to do to make those is just try and get this first side to look a little wavy by cutting out a little bit and then I'm going to kind of, and I like to have some areas that are thinner and some areas that are thicker. And you just want to cut smoothly, you know, work on this until you like it. That's not the best shape I've ever made there. And then the last thing that I need is my curly cues. And my curly cues were pretty long and I thought they needed to be shortened. And so probably I will shorten these after I curl them, which I do with the curling iron. But for right now, I'm just going to cut them. And what I'm going to do, because they, I want them to taper just a little bit so that it's narrow at the bottom and gets wider at, on the top, and then, and then I'll reverse that. So now I have these five curly pieces for curly cues. I have this left over for mistakes. And I'm going to attach my zipper ends, and I can decide whether to keep any of the metal parts of the zipper. I don't need to keep any of it, and it's probably easier if I don't. So what I'm going to do is set up my zipper foot. So as long as we have it, why not use the zipper tape? So I'm going to put a piece of this tape across here. And this is the part I thought I wouldn't like. Uh, getting the paper to come off. 
but the paper actually bends and comes off pretty easily so so that I like and then once I have a piece of tape on here I can use it to position this just how I want it so I tested my stitch and it's okay with me and so now I'm gonna stitch across here So here I am positioning this and I've got two pieces of tape that I'm going to put across here in the sweet spot and I'm going to push them down and I'm going to sew this the same way I sewed the other one. I'm just going to sew right through that zipper. I'm not going to worry about it. And I could finish this on both sides, but it's such a tiny amount on the inside of the bag where I don't think anybody would ever dig under there to find it, and so I'm not going to do that. Now, we don't have to finish any of these ends, and so we're in pretty good shape if we just load this up with tape. So we're going to go straight down one. And it's sticky enough that it's pretty easy to do. Some things, you know, you just pick and pick and pick at them and it's really hard to get. So even my zipper tab wants to stick to this tape. Okay, so I'm going to tape this on here. And it's hardest to judge when you're by the zipper head. And so I tend to move my zipper head away and double check that I like that. So I'll, I'll get my foot set to do one side, and then I'll do the other side for the first row of stitching, and then I'll do a double row of stitching, and I'll have my foot set for those. So we're just going to do this. So I've set my foot so that my guide just will ride along the cork, and I'll stitch really pretty close to it. So I'm just going to stitch this and then I'm going to come this other side. I'm going to stitch down here. I've moved my guide over so I'm stitching about 3 16 or sort of a fat eighth of an inch away from my first stitching. So I've just used a tiny amount of tape to tape these on the ends. And if you didn't have enough of your scrap, you could do, you know, something that came to a point and then where they didn't actually connect or they could butt right up to each other. And on the flower side, you could actually just um, have it break under the flower because the flower is going to cover quite a bit. But what I've done is I've used a little bit of tape on each end to tape these. I didn't use a lot. You could certainly use more. And because I'm not using very much tape and I know they're going to slip around, I've also uh, used a marker to mark where they go so that uh, just really close to the edge. Because my seam allowance here is going to be a little more than a quarter, right around a quarter. But uh, I definitely don't want any of this showing. And these pieces, because I have them diagonal, are a little bit short. But I think it'll be alright. And so I'm going to just stitch these on. And since I have an edge foot, I'm going to use it. I'm going to go kind of slow. This is why I didn't tape it that much. It tends to stretch a little as you go. 
and so I want it to be able to reposition. See, with the, because of the, the foot guide is straight, on the inside curve you almost stitch off. So if you had very curved uh, pieces, you might want to do it without your edge foot and just stitch it the best you could. Tape does allow you uh, to reposition it a bit, but it also will pull off some of your color if you're not careful. So you don't want to tape places where you've got the color unless it's going to be a very light amount of contact. I did manage to hop off there for just a little bit, now I'm going to restitch. Because I would rather it had a little bit of, it had a little bit of sloppiness than have it be unattached there, so I just restitched it. Okay, so I have this little correction there, and if I didn't mind having my flower on this side, I could easily cover that. And that will be on the back of the bag. And you know, I could have taken those stitches out and done a neater repair. This is going to box up a little on the bottom, so I don't want to go too low, and I don't want to go too in front of my zipper either. So I'm going to do this about here, I think. And then one of these will go like that. And then this one will go like that. Okay. So this is about what I'm looking at. And I've got these little curly cues to deal with. So this is the curling iron that I use to curl feathers. I don't know if you could do these two or three at a time. Probably could. And I don't think it needs that much. kind of get what we want here. I'm going to try to do two at a time. It does stick a little bit. I'm just going to let these cool. So it does melt off a little on there. A little bit. Just sort of smooth these out. I'm not trying to aggressively curl them. Just sort of So the backing does melt, and so you don't want to do it so long that the backing melted all the way, because it does start to get a little tacky. And this is the area of the center of my flower. And I'm just going to take this, and I'm just going to give myself a mark, just so that I don't drift off too far. Then. I'm going to get my tape again. Now, I found that I liked these to kind of curl up and around, so that's what I'm going to do. I have my edger foot on here, which will work fine. Um, a regular foot would be fine, too. I'm going to stitch all these down just for, you know, a little half inch or so. And I'm just going to hop from one to the next, then trim off all my threads, so. And I'm going to back stitch a little. Here's what that looks like with all the threads pulled off, and I do think these are going to get trimmed off at the end. And I've just cleaned it up on the inside with gotten rid of the extra threads. Okay, so I put this where I want it, and I could tape it, but I'm not going to. So I have this in the machine where I want it, and I've pulled up my threads, and so what I'm going to do is zigzag around this curve. I'm going to back stitch. So this is sewn down really well. You can see my zigzag. And then 
I need to decide between these I think this one's a little bigger so I'm going to go next and I just have to decide how I like it. I could fuss with it all day. And now what I'm going to do is shooting right for this area where there's less bulk I am going to zigzag this on. I'm going to pull up my thread again. I think you can see why I bought a machine where I could sew through so many layers and I I hope that there aren't people out there that are trying to make these things who just can't come up with a version. And I'm just going to try to zigzag around this. So now I've got the last one and I think this goes pretty nicely like that. And I've got a lot of layers once I've got it on here. And so down here there's less and so I'm going to try to sew through this way. I'm worried that some of you won't be able to do it. Here I'm going to be going through uh, one flower, two flowers, and maybe a little bit. You know, I'm really past that first one. See how that's way up there? And can you see how that's way up there under that flower and I'm down here? So I'm hoping I can get through that and I'm even more so hoping that you can. line your bag if this kind of thing bothered you. Okay, so got that. I'm going to cut these all so that they don't go any further than the ends of the bag to curl them up a little better. I like to just cut these ends. I just like these to curl back into the petals and I think they will. Um, all I'm going to try to do is basically the same thing you do when you do a button. I'm going to drop my feed dogs. I'm going to set it for zigzag. So I'm essentially zigzagging in place. And I'm going to attempt to just attach this through all this bulk the same way that you sew on a button with a machine. That is what I'm counting on to hold that guy on. Just as a matter of safety, I pull my head away from my seam and I pin back the flowers that, petals that I think could uh, press into my seams. And all we have left are a few little pieces of business that, because we don't have any seams to finish or anything like that, should be pretty quick. So first of all, we're going to match up our corners. And we're going to sew our two side seams and I'm not using a very large seam allowance you certainly don't need to and if you did 5 8 or something like that with this cork you probably want to trim it and I'm going to do this at about a two and a half and I just will feel better if I stitch this twice so that's what I'm going to do I almost never uh, pin, but I especially wouldn't pin this because I think you'd mar up your cork uh, layer on top. And then across the bottom, you could stitch across the bottom really quick. For this project, we're going to box the corners similar to the way we've done for other projects. This cork is stiffer to work with than regular fabric, and so you have to deal with that. Also, for this one, I'm going to use a glass to draw a curve. 
and stitch that instead of straight across and that just gives another look when we're doing it. Because this is so stiff I find that it's easiest to just clip off the corner, the point, as you're pushing it into the right shape and you match up your seams and with that clipped off you can kind of lock your seams together and then check inside the bag and make sure that you're nice and lined up. Then as I'm holding this, I can go one, one one direction and one the other, and it kind of relieves some of that. Makes it easier to lock your seams up against each other. It's difficult to stitch through this once you come around the second side of the arc, and it's easy to slip off the material. You can just take a couple different runs at it. I'm trying to stitch this in full twice anyway. And the easiest way may be to stitch it all the way around one direction, flip it over, and then starting on the other side, stitch around. You might want to mark both sides with your glass to do that, or you might be able to tell the shape you want because of your previous stitching. Then we just trim it off to a quarter of an inch or a little bit less, and we have these nice looking corners that are just a little variation on the regular box corner that we've done before. And I always say turning out isn't pretty. Boy, it's especially not pretty with cork. And I don't know if there's a trick to this for some people, but okay. just turn it out. It's sort of turn, like turning out rubber. push out these rounded corners and I like to get them nice and pushed out and I want to I'm just going to do a little bit of a nip next to my zippers I'm not going to get near my stitching but I'm just going to nip a little bit of that off I don't like to leave that much thread in there anyway My mom moved back last spring and so my brother's coming to visit all of us and really looking forward to it. Okay, so just want to push these out a little bit to where they look as square as they can. And then I can pull my pins out, which I didn't put in any of the cork. I just pinned into the fabric. And I tried to hide the ends of the pins down in the material so that you're not as likely to poke yourself when you're working on it. So here's this. I think it's really coming along. I almost, when I turn out, I almost want to kind of burnish these from the inside, these seams. But that's something you'll have to decide. But if you, if you see what I did with these curves, these kind of come up instead of squaring up and it's just another shape it just makes it a little more complex and I like to play with that a lot in fact I like to play with doing one side like this and another side different and see what shape it makes but so we're we're almost finished Alright, so this is a buttonhole twist and it's just Coates and Clark. This is just a very thick thread and I have only got one uh, strand through here. You could easily do two strands, which is what I do when I sew buttons with regular thread. And then I'm just going to sew this and I'm not going to go all the way through into my cork for this part. All I'm going to, except for this top layer, all I'm going to do is 
try to get through these top layers. So I'm feeling around for a part where I can get near the center. And I found a part here where I can get near the center. And I'm going to come up into this center here. And I'm going to use my pliers for this and probably also a thimble. So I feel like I've got that nice and secure. And so I'm just going to tie this off. And I know there are ways to tie a knot where you wrap around and pull through. And I have never been able to get my knot down where I wanted it. So, so I guess I'll go with the tailor. Okay, so even though I think tailoring is so cool, I want to do a couple of uh, zipper installations that borrow uh, things from tailoring. This is mercurized cotton. It's a little stronger because it's mercurized. I picked it basically for the color. I've got two strands through my needle and I'm using a, an old bent needle because I think this, what I'm going to do, may well bend my needle and it's a pretty good sized one. I'm not gonna tack every leaf or petal and I'm not gonna tack to the bag any more than I feel I should, but I'm gonna do at least three to the bag and then I'm gonna tack some of the other ones um, to each other. But what I wanna do is start by getting a nice bite. The main thing with this is I do think you want a nice bite out of your fabric and out of the cork especially because you don't want that to pull through. Um, you really you don't want to, this isn't like a hem where you take the tiniest little one thread worth. This is where when I say hand tacking I mean that we're going to take that's going all the way through the cork and I'm taking that much and then I'm going to take that much out of my fabric and this first stitch is easy because I can see everything that I'm doing but once you pull this together and I can feel that thread running against my finger once you pull it together then uh, you have to get in there without the benefit of um, being able to pull it back like that. So now I'm going to go from the side and try to see what I'm doing. So let's see. I'm going to go right back through that same hole in my cork and I'm going to come up right through the same hole and I'm going to and I'm going to do this so a total of three times. So that's one and a half times and when I come back through my cloth, that's going to be my second time. And I'm going to do one more time. So a couple parting thoughts. Um, one is that if you wanted to do a decorative stitch along uh, your stripes, it could be really attractive. And I think even more so if you pulled in the black from the zipper or uh, added an accent color, you know, like red or you know, chartreuse, something that would be fun. And so that's one idea. Another thing is in the sewing room when I'm making purses, it's important that they feel good with stuff in them. And I don't think you need to test it overstuffed, but in the sewing room I like to test just by putting my uh, 
tools and things in there and just seeing, you know, how does it how does it feel with stuff in it? And this of course is my prototype, but they're designed so similarly, the other one would be the same. And so that's a thought for you. Another thing is, let's face it, this product is pricey and this is has the black backing on the the dark blue and it's very supple and beautiful and I'm looking forward to making something out of this. I think I'll do a tutorial. I don't know how when it'll come, but I will do a tu tutorial out of this. Cork. Oh. And basting tape. I like it a lot better than I thought I would. Make sure you sew if you tape. So I'm very excited about a new feature I was just notified of in YouTube called the Community Tab. The Community Tab allows you to post a video in there or a picture or a poll and I'm not sure what all the capabilities are but I'm really excited because sometimes someone will ask me a question where I want to just show them a quick picture of something. We'll figure out in the coming weeks what this new capability really will do for us and I'm sure that YouTube will tweak it as we go forward. But check out the new community tab on my channel page and some people, uh, things that I post there will show up in your feeds depending on how your notifications are set. Check it out. Thanks. Community tab. Bye.